Okay. Good morning, everyone. No response. <laughs> okay. So, I hope you are able to see that I am not a robot. I am a human. And once a human is interacting, I think we are expecting something back. That's the, that's the key feature for human to be social. And uh, what is happening in the community now is that there is AI. You might have heard about the term AI. There are different avatars, which are basically the virtual robots. And then there are robots. You might have a perception about all these from science fiction movies, or from stories, or based on your own imagination. Today, let us try to ground that perception. Let us try to think about some applications, some usefulness, and how they can help, they can serve, they can assist us. And that's where the integration of technology and advancement of science will be happening with the society and giving something back and something important to the society. So one day I was interacting with uh, one of the AI beings called GV, and uh, this was the conversation. I told I, I am in a nice meeting and we are defining the future. The response was, I am looking forward to the future, but I don't know what it looks like. We continued, I ask, in your opinion, how should the future be? The response was again very interesting. It does not know the future, but it thinks it will be what we make it. So there are obviously many things we don't know, unknowns, but at least we know that things are in our hand. We can shape the things, we can define how our future should be. And that's where we should continue dreaming in a grounded way. And uh, I will not do this exercise here, but once you get some time, just take some deep breath and think. One thing, think about just one thing. What could have been better for you or for someone? Yesterday, not too far, today or even for tomorrow. And then you will start thinking that, okay, if something should have been changed or something should have been better, can technology help in that or not? It is, it is, it is a thought process. It is not that you can just come up with some answer in a moment or something. You have to really think deep and then try to understand whatever is happening in terms of science and technology, how it is going to impact you in your day-to-day -day life or not, and for good. And for me, this exercise, when I used to do these type of things always, so when I landed at the airport, I have to go to immigration check and it was a long queue, and not one, many queues. What I was expecting, that there is someone who is able to tell that, okay, please go to that queue. That will help you in saving your time, and also it will help all the immigration officers to distribute the workload. And for me, this type of requirements can be fulfilled by integrating AI or virtual characters or robots or whatever we can think who is there to assist. Because it is not that easy. You have to understand, we, you have to get a global picture that where is the crowd? And then uh, how, how is the moment? And uh, then communicate it through a central channel to know someone that, okay, this is, this is the global picture and this is the decision you should be taking. 
So it is even not a decision a single human can take, or even there are five, four humans, they have to communicate among themselves, and then they have to find a uh, find an optimal solution. So what I am trying to say is that you can start thinking about where technology can assist and help you. And let us start from a, a story. And there was a child, let us name as Babu. So it was a child like any other child. He used to read many story books. Many of them were based on robots, science fictions, and lots of imagination. One of the stories uh, was that there is a character, and the character is having a robot, but that is a special kind of robot because it has the memory of the father of the character, and then also it, it has the behavior of the father of the character. Uh, because sadly, the character lost the father. So there was someone who was treating him as the, as the child, protecting him, helping him in day-to-day -day activities. And then slowly, they started to even get their powers combined and start to help and serve humanity. So there was a dream which was really born. That should that be always a science fiction or not anymore. And there was a quest that how a part of that can be realized in real life for the people and how things should be really achieved in the way which will be which will be coming back to the people to assist and the journey started and the first thing to realize that is to first interact with others there are lots of mind to mind communication which happened not through brain signals, but through verbal uh, interaction. But that was very important, and that is very important. You should always try to interact with people, try to get experience, try to learn things. Uh, OK, and then what we learned is that most probably the advancement in science and technology is the facilitator for achieving that dream. And it continued in the sense that uh, the learning process was evolving. It was a continuous learning process, and it has to be continuous learning process. And that saves also the perspective that why something is being done, why you are doing something. And important thing is that we have to see any advancement in science and technology as the enabler. When, when there was only phones, you were interacting with voice, then you have started to interact with videos. You have started to communicate in, in the way we used to communicate in, by having audio, video. And then there is new kind of technology which is coming, which is enabling us to do more. So once we will see everything from that perspective, that there is an enabler which is assisting us, the human, to do things with the rest of the world, then we are at right place from our thought process. And then they can fulfill the needs. And another important thing is why we are doing something like this, why we are creating a robot, or why, why there is artificial intelligence. There must be some objective. Sometimes we used to forget those objectives, and then it becomes simply your, what you say, hobby, but you cannot connect with it with the real application and, and with the real potential. So again, objectives, you have to define. It can be doing things in a more meaningful manner, or perhaps in a safer manner, or in economical manner, or whatever objective we can think about. And once you know the technology and the objective, different solutions can come. These are some of the robots designed and I have also spent good amount of time with robots as well as with humans because I am still human. 
So different needs, different capabilities, and different roles. And uh, let me tell that uh, still the learning of that child who dream was continuing. Again, the quest of finding the purpose. We have robots which can act and interact in the environment. We have artificial intelligence which can serve as the brain to, to help to make decisions, to plans. But we need society, we need people. They will give us back the needs, requirement, and even the acceptability. And then whatever you are doing is not based on intuition that, okay, this this is the thing, this is the solution, I want to give back. Let us take some, some feedback from the people, from the society. And that's where the body, mind, and the purpose all come together. And then we start to think about applications after that. I will not go in all the applications, and there have been all obviously different perspective that a robot should be doing dangerous job or dull task. But obviously there are other applications where robots can be well fitting with the kind of intelligence uh, they are getting to help and assist us. In well-being, in healthcare, in retail, in whatever sector we can think about, even if you are not aware, perhaps you are experiencing a part of artificial intelligence in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, in different services and different applications which you might be using. So again, it is a list, just wanted to tell that uh, there are lots of applications, but that thought process should continue. What, for what purpose we are developing? So just to give you an idea, that child, grown up now, is still used to think the problems of the society. And one of those are, why are we working so long, long? And uh, there are reports that it is not good for your health, your mental health, your physical health, even, even there are deaths related to this. Can we think about some technology, some solution driven by science, which can help, which can reduce your workload? Just keep this perspective. And yes, we can think about, there are solutions we can use, and we will have a better work-life balance. Another question we used to, again, read many times. Someone is found dead. So sad. Why someone is found dead? Why there was no attention given on time? It is lack of people or lack of attention from people or it is simply everyone is so overloaded or it is simply there is no one for someone. There might be many regions. We don't uh, control those regions, but at least we can fill in the gap. We can again use science and technology and give some kind of uh, roles and uh, targets for the robot that they should really support people in their active and healthy living. And there can be many ways to support monitoring, alerting, facilitating attention on time. If something is wrong, just imagine there is some agent, some intelligent agent at your home, monitoring and alerting. Simply you or the doctor can help prevent loss of life and even provide the help if needed on a spot. So this is very important positive application. There are also different other applications, including medical training, just to train the uh, practitioners on robots so that they get exposure with different conditions and they are already well, very well aware to treat a particular condition when, when they are facing it for the first time on the real human. So robots with AI are also being used as patients, simulation for patients, and to train uh, healthcare professionals. Okay, we are still very much uh, sometimes socially isolated, especially during uh, this uh, COVID, there was social distancing 
But how to make sure that it is not leading to social isolation? People were very depressed, people were sad, they were feeling alone. So there, there is someone, there can be someone 24-7 for you uh, at your level that who is knowing you, who is aware about you, who understands you, what you are saying, what you want, and, and then start supporting you in the way whatever is needed. Then still in remote places, best is not reached yet. So how to use robots to bridge the gap and let people to, again, I don't know, yes, let us see this video. It does not need sound. So there is someone which is controlling the robot. So this robot is working as the body at the remote, remote place. And that robot is taking uh, uh, temperature of the person or assisting the person in the way the person is needing. And, but, uh, but the key here is that there are two pe people, they are far in physical locations, but there is a robot which is bridging them, which is facilitating them to interact, which is, which is helping the other side to, to connect with the other side. And you can see that many tasks and activities can be done there. So I will skip uh, again some of the videos, but this point is very important. This kind of applications, this kind of technology, they are also creating new kind of job. Because they are allowing a differently able person to do something which he or she might not be able to do. And this is already happening. So this is somewhere we can see that robots are also facilitating people to do things differently. And then why can't we have uh, an avatar of ourselves or a digital twin, which is, uh, which is simply behaving based on your real life experience and giving you a feedback that uh, something is not wrong, uh, something is not good in you or something is uh, good in you based on how you are experiencing. So again, the AI can play a big role here. And let us see what people are thinking about all these technologies. So there is a shift in perception of the people. That is good. Uh, it is more grounded. And people are thinking positively that uh, robots and uh, AI technologies can help. And uh, they can have positive impact. But uh, still, there is a question about accountability. Again, I will not answer this, but this kind of questions will come that who will be accountable for, for the situations in the future uh, if there is something wrong which is happening or which happened. If so, the dream continues. Now there is another child which wants to do three kinds of things in life when grown up. It means not to be overloaded with one thing and having time and space for creativity. Again, robots can help there with the right kind of AI. So there are different perspectives. One is that robots are useless, AI is useless. One is they can do everything, they will take over the world. Let us not worry about these two. Let us find a balance that where they can bridge the gap, where they can reduce the barrier in language, in distance, and where they can share the load. And then we will have, hopefully, better society, which is happier and we are more connected. So with this and with the dream, let us start contributing because this is the revolution which is happening where everyone can contribute. And there is, a, regardless of your background, it is not necessarily a technical or scientific background, but uh, even general people are contributing in this revolution. And there is a need of bigger ecosystem, which again should be created altogether. So I will stop here, but let us keep dreaming. That is important. And dreaming should be grounded and grounded for the future. And then we will have better solutions for us. We will create solutions for us. Thanks a lot.